This past weekend, the University of Akron lost one of our communication professors. We spoke to coworkers and students of Dr. Paul Jackaway on his legacy. Let's take a look. Um, I was his advisor in the master's program, and we met when I was teaching intro to grad studies. Um, and so, and then we just kind of hung out the rest of the, uh, the two years that he was here as well as all the time afterwards as well. I, I did, I worked on final edition, um, journalism according to Jack and Jim Knight. Um, so that was a, an adventure. <laughs> and um, uh, so it was, a, it was a great experience. There would be always times, um, I don't know if you realize that his office, you always have to go by his office to get to my office. And so we'd always stop by and, and chat about how things were going and, and students and, and uh, projects that he was working on. Um, and he had just ordered for Jen um, a camera that you put on your uh, band so so the camera would uh, so she would walk around and and it was going to be his tree hugging documentary last week he received um, his nonprofit status so he could begin doing documentaries um, in earnest but the first one he was going to work on was the one um, down by Athens where Jen was going to w wear this camera on her hat had he was going to follow her but he, so he could you know he could see everything that she was seeing right. well that was one of the i think real characteristics of paul he has a fat i'm sorry he had a fabulous sense of humor it's very hard for me not to talk about him in the present tense you know what he called me didn't you no. mom because, and he would always introduce me as mom at AEJ. At, and I said, Paul, don't do that. I am not that old. <laughs> and he, so he always would explain then that, that I, because I was always there um, kind of in a supportive um, position, I guess, um, to, for whatever he wanted to get done. Um, my name is Jennifer Bell. I am, I've been friends, very close friends to Paul for the past 10 years. My current position is uh, co-owner with Paul's production company and also a uh, graduate student. All right, so why don't you tell me a little bit more about your life with Paul? I mean, I know that you guys were super, super close. So I want to know what your experiences were like with him because he was such an amazing guy and let's just talk about his life and you together with him and working on these projects. Um, Kitty Endress actually just told me about the project you guys were about to do with the tree hugging documentary. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was me and Paul. That Yeah, I will tell you about that. So Paul went to Kent State for his undergraduate degree in journalism. So he had a journalism background. Um, he then worked in for Capitol Records in California and came back here and got his master's degree in journalism and then his PhD in journalism. That's great. Yeah. Um, he and I met in our master programs at the University of Akron. It was, he started in the spring semester and I met him over, I met him in the conference room during the Christmas gathering at the communication department. Okay. And he, being a uh, non-typical graduate student, he was older, as was I, we kind of hit it off right away because we had that in common. Um, but from there, it just, our relationship picked up very quickly because of his sense of humor, his, his uh, motivation towards what he believed in and what he loved doing, and, uh, his desire to teach, which was my desire as well. Um, I finished my master's program first and came down to Athens, Ohio, to go to the o Ohio University to get my PhD. And uh, two years later, Paul followed me and came here. 
while he was still in Akron and I was down here, he had visited his best friend from high school, is a veterinarian in Cincinnati, and he text messaged me and said, Jen, did you know there are deer in Indiana, white-tailed deer? <laughs> and I laughed hysterically and said, yeah, Paul, we have them here in Ohio as well. <laughs> but he was a city boy. He grew up in Akron. He went to California. You know, he, he just, that wasn't a part of who he was. So when he moved down to a Athens, I was like, this is what I'm going to teach Paul. And so I got him involved in the uh, environmental aspect of what he was doing. And so we worked together on his Cyberling film and um, his most recent endeavors that he was currently working on. And I was kind of a continuity person that he would go to. Is this right with environmental stuff? Is, is this what I'm saying? Is this what I'm trying to do? And, and so I, I was able to teach him my passion as he taught me his. That's awesome. Yeah. So can you tell me one of your favorite stories about Paul? Oh, my life. <laughs> we had many. He was, and everybody that I have talked to in the last few days, everybody says the same thing about Paul. He made us laugh. And that was the, that was the connection that he had to most people, was that he had a dry, serious sense of humor. And, and you had to know him to know that he was joking, but once you got to know him, you realized how m much of his life was funny to him and, and to all of us. So that was sharing times when, when we were together that he would say something to somebody and they would take him seriously. And I knew he was completely joking. Those were the best memories because, because I'd be laughing hysterically and the other person would be going, I'm not sure. <laughs> Why is everybody laughing? <laughs> But that, I like that because his connection to even his, he's had friends that he went to grade school with that he st is still in contact with in the Kenmore area. Um, all the way through, he's got friends in California that still con contact him in Wisconsin and Michigan. And, and these are all period people that he has touched throughout his life. And all of us have the same idea or the same perception that Paul made us laugh. And I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so incredible like he just led such a wonderful interesting life and was just he did you know, it was amazing the and doing it you know do. following his uh, following his dream his passion yeah. he did it by himself and I think that's really neat and, and encouraging yeah and you know when I was talking to Kitty Endress it was just you know so heartwarming you know she was telling me stories about you know when he used to call her mom yeah you know yeah. and Cause she was his yeah. advisor through the master's program and everything like that and always gave him advice and they, they worked together on the john s knight film right. that paul got his um emmy award for and and uh dr endress also got one for being a part of that so it was neat because because they really got to work closely on something that they were both very passionate about right and they Got rewarded for it by winning an Emmy with it, which was cool. That's very, very cool. Dr. Jay Coe was a huge advocate for, for ZTV and WCIP for both programs. He always uh, not only spoke highly of the programs to the students, but also was kind enough to let us come into his classroom. And uh, he would always say, you know, yeah, you got 10 minutes, and we would end up uh, taking a, a much bigger chunk than that. And uh, always let us have uh, some of that precious time to answer questions that the students had about the programs. So huge advocate for, for, for both CTV and WCIP. Um, as a colleague, I've known Dr. Jake away since I was, I believe I had just graduated with my master's and started working here as an adjunct instructor. And um, he had just started his master's then and, you know, he always had that, you know, really quirky, direct in your face type of, type of uh, sense of humor. Um, and and just, just really great. And he really enjoyed teaching in academia. And, and also, uh, um, he was a, a, a great uh, storyteller. Um, he, he really enjoyed working on his documentaries and he had a very uh, distinct style. And, um, 
and you know we kept in touch quite a bit uh, while he was getting his doctorate at um, at OU at Ohio University, and uh, it was great to hear that he was getting uh, coming back here as a visiting lecturer and um, and you know it was also nice to see that his sense of humor had not changed, um, and yeah we um, we always uh, exchange ideas and notes on on our teaching and. Um, so, I'm Dan Cermak. Um, I had Dr. Jackaway um, last semester, fall semester of 2014, uh, for Intro to Media Production. Um, it's honestly the class I probably, I mean, I'm being totally honest here that I'm going to remember the most out of the classes so far. Um, Dr. Jackaway was uh, the professor that I've had the most personal, I had the most personal relationship with um, out of all the ones I had. Um, I just it was a 745 class, so, you know, it's hard to get up in the morning sometimes. Um, so, but he made it worth it. He'd always, like, he always made sure that I was okay in the class, that I was feeling okay. He made the extra effort to talk to me even after class, and um, he got to a point where, I mean, I really cared about how he was doing. And even this year, you know, I see him around the community. I don't have a class with him th this current semester, but... I see him around the communication department and just, I always enjoyed seeing him. I always caught up with him and, you know, like, I, I know he really cared about teaching and he wanted students to learn a lot and he wanted them to succeed in the class and do the most of their ability. He wanted to see everyone give effort and just improve over the course of the semester because a lot of people, they don't have experience in the media production side and they just, he wanted to give a good introduction. I think he definitely did that. Um, I'm going to miss him a lot. Hi, this is Dr. Phil Hoffman. I want to extend my wishes to Paul Jakeway's family in this time. Paul was always a great advocate for the students in ZTV, and he has been a good friend of mine since I was in college. I miss you already, man. I met Paul Jackaway in the summer of 2015 when he returned to the University of Akron, and I was told that he had already been here for a degree and discovered that we had a shared alma mater of Ohio University. And uh, I didn't know him for long, but it doesn't take long to find out that he has a passion for his students and uh, documentary making, which we had discussed and discussed financial opportunities. So his class followed mine. So we often had those sorts of discussions in the state of radio. And um, I really enjoyed meeting him. and. Uh, certainly benefited from that experience and will certainly enjoy much of his work that he created and left behind for us to enjoy. So my deepest sympathies to his family because I can only imagine what it means to lose someone like that in your family and certainly uh, it was a loss to the creative force of the University of Akron. Hi, I'm Tim Transu. Not even a student in the communications department. I'm actually an electrical engineering student. But I knew Dr. Jake away because every time we'd leave the building, there he'd be outside having his cigarettes and we'd sit there and talk with him for as long as we would want to talk about absolutely nothing, just making sure that things were still going the way they should be going and that life was happening the way it should be happening. If we, If I had our kids with us, he would always make sure how they were doing, you know, tussle their hair and things like that. And just generally make sure that everyone was having a good day. You know, I never had him as a professor. I only knew him as a person. And I could tell you that he's someone who just generally cared about people a great deal. Everything, it seemed as though every time I had any contact with him, he, he just wanted to make sure everyone was okay. You will be missed. On behalf of all of us at the University of Akron and ZTV, we salute the impact Dr. Jackaway had on our station. He will truly be missed.